Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite bicep exercises. There has been a lot of talk in the natural community as of late regarding pushing these standards and I think that's excellent. There are still too many people who think that it's impossible to get big arms naturally and that is simply untrue. Many people have proved that and I'm a proof of that myself. Right now, for reference, I'm going to plug a picture of me when I was 18. That was roughly 10 years ago. And as you can see, I had complete spaghetti arms. I had around 11 inches arms, which is ridiculously small. And after 10 years of natural training and of isolating my arms and biceps in particular, I managed to gain 7 inches on that measurement. And that leads us to what I look like today. If I could do it from my skinny self, Anyone can do it. And I want to make sure that you guys do the right exercises because if you're going to want to increase the size of your biceps, there's no two way around it. You're going to have to do curls. So let's talk about my favorite curls of all times for hypertrophy and muscle gains, starting with the close grip preacher curl. So for this exercise in particular, you're of course going to need a preacher curl station. However, if you have an incline or decline bench in your gym, you can always find a way to make it work. Just know that the angle of the station is going to determine the range of motion and the way you're going to do the exercise because here we are going to specifically focus on training the bicep in an effective range of motion and we're never going to go beyond that. You're going to see that even though some people think more range of motion is always better, this is not the case for this, especially if you do a close grip. So why do we do a close grip for this one in particular? Well, it's because we want to bias the outside of the arm here. We want to bias the short head of the bicep that tends to be underdeveloped in many lifters. And therefore, a close grip and having the bar ahead in front of you is going to help in that endeavor. So the lift is actually quite simple. You want to wrap your hand around the bar because as you're going to curl up, you're going to curl inside. You don't want the wrist to be like this, okay? The wrists are not protruded forward, they're curled inside. That is going to help recruit more inner forearms here. So, I'm going to get down and get your bar. And from this position here, you can be extended in front of the bar, it's perfectly fine. And then you're going to establish position here. And we are here perfect to start with our close grip. Okay, look at the range of motion I'm going to espouse. A close grip preacher curl and preacher curl in particular stop here. Okay, so my arms are parallel with the floor. They don't go below that. Past that, what you're going to find is many people start to overcompensate by rounding the shoulder forward and moving their torso forward. So in truth, you don't get more range of motion, you just accompany the bar. On top of that, you will find that many people who get injured and tear a bicep, tear it in this position. The preacher curl can be your best friend or your worst nightmare. Every time I see a nanny get injured on this lift, it's because they try to go deeper than what I am here. There's no need, okay? You don't need to impress anyone. The bicep is almost maximally stretched. You will get gains from this position. Please do not make the mistake of going deeper, we are perfectly fine here. And then when you go up, you go up all the way and you stack the joints. If you look at my forearms, they are now perpendicular with the ceiling. So you start perpendicular, you stop parallel, stick to that rule with pressure curls always. And then you go up. I don't want to see any other parts of the body moving. Your hips are stationary, your ass is on the bench. And like that, you can go to failure safely and you make sure that all of the work is directed towards the bicep. The good thing about the preacher curl is that it stabilizes the elbow because you cannot lift your elbow and it also stabilizes the shoulder joint. Many people when they curl and there's nothing wrong with that move their shoulders up and down. What are they doing? They are assisting the movement. This is fine but it means that you're not fully isolating the bicep. The one thing I would encourage you guys to do is when you do your set I come here, okay? This is my last rep, oh, I'm struggling up, 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 up. I'm here, the last thing you'll do is, when you let go of the bar, don't just dump it, slowly go through the negative. Here, 
Get it, Sam, struggling. And once you're here and you're parallel with the floor, lift your hips and resist in that position for as long as you can. And when you can't anymore, dump it, okay? And I mean it. Don't try to hold onto the bar and don't let the bar overextend your arms like this. Dump it, right? And this is going to be your fell proof system to grow the short head of the bicep. So that was for the preacher curl. As you can tell, it's a variation. You can do any type of curls on that particular piece of equipment, but this is the one I favor. I find that it's very easy to fill the bicep, to stay within the effective range of motion. It puts an immense focus on the short head of your bicep. If you want that pop from the side, you have to actually try to make sure that you bias your exercises towards that specific head of the bicep. The long head right there is pretty much going to grow whatever you do in terms of curling exercises I have found. And for most people, it will rarely be underdeveloped, whereas the opposite is not necessarily true. And now we're going to move to the one I personally call the Arnold curl. I call this one the Arnold curl because it's technically a lift I stole from Arnold, but I modified it because if you know the way he used to do his curls, his concentration curls, it was in between the legs with maximal stretch of the bicep. I'm someone who stays away from that. I do not use the elasticity of the tendon to get the weight up when I do my curls. I always keep it muscle only and therefore I modified it to make sure that I stay within the range of motion that I want. So instead of doing the curl in between the leg where you're going to go all the way down and all the way up, today I'm going to teach you a different way. I would recommend you do the movement with a fat grip. So the way we're going to set it up is very simple. You're going to sit on a chair or a bench like I'm doing right now. I like to stay relatively upright when I do it. So you're going to grab your weight and here in this position, you're going to take your hand and you're going to cup it. Okay, so we don't want to grab, you're going to naturally cup the bar here. Set it up in position with the other hand, right? Into my leg. This is going to be the top range of motion where it touches my shoulder and my bottom range of motion is going to be around here. So again, parallel with the floor. When you do movements, when both the elbow and the shoulder are stationary, you want to make sure that you don't go deeper than that. What I don't want to see is you going below this portion here. There is a place for you to go deeper with the arm, but this is not one of them. This is an isolation curl. So this right there is going to be your striking range. And as you can see, the thumb is not grabbing. I am wrapping. The entire bicep is of course over recruited and it's under tension throughout the movement. It gets absolutely no rest. At no point is this resting on the leg, okay? You always have to keep control and up and up. And this right now that I'm using, this is not even supposed to be challenging for me, but this is one of these that if you actually use weight and even if it's not supposed to be heavy weight and you lengthen the set, just having to hold in that position is horrible. Instead, what you're going to do is in this position, you're going to just do a thumbless grip. And it really doesn't make a difference. It's just that it's much easier. Look at the range of motion. Yes, it's a partial movement. So don't be the type that is obsessed with going for range of motion all the time. It's perfectly fine to cut it short for the bicep. These two exercises are already going to give you a tremendous amount of gains. And on top of that, because they are hyper-focused in terms of hypertrophy, they are going to overtax the one area that we want. And that is, of course, these guns right there. So once that is taken care of, what is left for us to work, right? We already have, we have the mass right there. We have the development of the forearm. We have the complete formation of the bicep. Now there's a peak. What is next to do for us? Well, what you don't want is, you don't want to have a ton of mass in the inside, but then you turn around, you flex like this, and there's nothing going on around here. So we want to develop the brachialis and the forearm as well. This doesn't mean that the lift I'm going to show to you is a forearm movement per se. It's still a bicep movement, but it's again biased. It's going to be biased towards the outside of the arm right here. And that is the pinwheel curl, one of my favorite curls of all time. 
and one that I prefer over armor curves because armor curves have a tendency, in my opinion, to over recruit the front delt and we want to avoid that. So instead of doing the armor curves in front of us like this, we're going to do them inside the body like this in the fashion I'm going to show to you right now. So as you all know, a hammer curl is a curl that is going to be done with a hammer grip. So a hammer grip is very simple. Instead of grabbing the middle of the dumbbell, you're going to grab it where the collar actually connects with the plate. And that way, it's going to put more pressure on the forearm. When you do the movement, it's absolutely essential you do this. I see so many guys who do the armor curl like this. But look at the forearm and look at the wrist in particular. The forearm and the wrist are not that involved. What is super involved here is the shoulder. You want to let it slip. And in that position, you want to engage the forearm. And engaging the forearm means what? It means that the wrist is tilted upwards. That way, when you go through the movement, you are certain you're actually going to work what you want, which is the outside of the arm like this. And then we're going to modify it to make it more biased, even more biased towards the bicep. And how do we do that? We do it inside the body instead of in front of the body. So a pinwheel curl resembles something like this. You start here, right, with the body inside in this position, and you go here. And then you go back down, and you repeat the movement here. That is a pinwheel curl. It's super easy to do, and the first time you'll do it, you'll think, oh man, this makes a ton of sense and it feels very natural. And it absolutely does. It feels tremendous and you're going to feel a ton of contraction here. You can see it even when I walk. Look at these guys. These guys are being maximally recruited. Even though I'm someone who is not lean at all, I'm around 16, 17% body fat, you can still see the outside of the arm walk as I do it. And it's because it puts a tremendous amount of stress on this area in particular. So I absolutely recommend you guys you do that movement. You don't have to over exaggerate the portion here. You don't need to go there because this portion here doesn't do much. I could do a thousand reps like this. It's not interesting. The money portion is this here. This portion here and then back up is where you want the entirety of the work to go. You don't need to extend the arm at the bottom again all of that, I believe, for hypertrophy to be fairly useless. Focus entirely on the portions that give you the best stimulus. Skip the rest. It's going to be better for recovery, lower injury risk, and overall, it's going to save you time. You can actually expand and invest into muscle building. You will find that the exercises I'm showing to you today tend to be ones that are not super taxing on your overall recovery. And for small muscle groups, I find that it is a very good thing. If you don't overstimulate and over recruit the tendon, you're going to have an easier time to do these exercises more often. And for the bicep in particular, it's always better to have that approach. Train it intensely, yes. Do as much volume as you can, yes. But favor doing it several times throughout the week. So you can actually use all of the exercises I'm showing to you today and rotate them. You don't have to do the same one every single time. And this is going to conclude this video. So as you can tell, nothing crazy, nothing revolutionary per se. These are just curls. But if you actually stick to these exercises, you do them regularly with progressive overload throughout the years, you will see results. Every single time there is someone in natural that says, oh, I have small arms and I'll never have big arms because I'm natty, I have bad genetics. All of that are excuses. It's just that these are people who cannot stick to the plan. Yes, maybe doing curls is not as fun or intense as doing a deadlift. But trust me, if you treat them as a priority, you stick to them and you actually progress, there is no way around it. The bicep is a muscle like any other muscle. It will respond and adapt to stimulus. So make sure you actually put these exercises in your training, do them regularly for the years, and before you know it, you're finally going to be able to get massive arms the way you always dreamt, like I did, like a ton of other natties on this platform did. Stick to your training, keep progressing, and I will be seeing you next time.